uh, we're beginning chapter 12, and chapter 12 is about relevant costs uh, for decision making. And up front, let me say that uh, there's nothing new in chapter 12 that you don't already know how to do. It should be, uh, as you read the chapter, you think you should be thinking, really? Is this all there is? There's, there's no, no new knowledge. There's only new application. So we're going to take just a brief minute to just introduce some terms. And then we're going to follow several different examples through the book to see how it's applied. But chapter 12 uh, is, is more of the art of accounting rather than the science of accounting. So there's not a lot of new knowledge here, only application in perhaps a new context, just to get you used to the idea of relevant costs. But I think as you go through them, you'll think to yourself, well, this is, this is common sense. It's fairly straightforward. And uh, my answer to that is yes, this is probably one of the most straightforward chapters in, in the book. In fact, you could have probably started with chapter 12 right after chapter 2 and, and thought, I haven't missed anything. Well, there we are. So um, it's not going to be that hard. So let's get to it. Um, we're making decisions. And when we make decisions, we have to uh, think about, well, what is this alternative going to cost versus that alternative? And to assess the, uh, uh, the value of the alternatives, what we're really looking for here is the difference in cost between the two. So we just want to include costs that are relevant to the decision. A um, bunch of different names for relevant costs. Avoidable costs, differential costs, incremental costs, they all mean the same thing. These are costs that differ among alternatives and will be incurred in the future. So this definition is smuggling in two things. So let's be sure that we understand what it is. Costs that differ among the alternatives and will be incurred in the future. So costs that differ but in, are incurred in the past, well, that's down here. That's a sunk cost. Notice we have the word unavoidable, sunk, or irrelevant. Costs that have either already been incurred or that will not differ among the alternatives. There you go. That's, that's, that's all that's new in Chapter 12. You're done. You can go right to the problems now. That really is it. So let's just look at a few examples, and, and uh, we're going to see how, how absolutely straightforward this really is. So the, um, the textbook gives a um, sort of a, a quick example of somebody who wants to drive uh, to Moncton um, or take the train and is trying to decide between the two alternatives and so has uh, diligently sat down and uh, wrote out all the possible costs uh, that, uh, that could, could arise. Um, here is the uh, costs of uh, the depreciation on the vehicle, broken down per, per kilometer, costs of gasoline per uh, kilometer, the annual cost of uh, auto insurance and license per kilometer, maintenance and repairs, parking uh, fees at the university, and finally tires. So uh, we have a, an all-in cost per kilometer based on driving 16,000 kilometers a year. Now, these costs would change if suddenly we said, well, what if we drive 30,000 30, kilometers per year? Well, your depreciation would change. Some of these costs would change. So let's just be clear that the 50 cents, 50 and a half cents per kilometer we're getting is an average cost per kilometer based on a usage of 16,000. And then down here we have the cost of the, the, the uh, via rail, $85 for a round-way trip. There are some costs that can't be quantified. They're more of a qualitative feature. What is my time worth? If I don't have to drive and I can sit on the train, can I accomplish something? Is there work that I can do or would I just be sitting staring out the window? Uh, when we get to, uh, uh, to Moncton, the benefits of having a car available, I need to quantify that somehow. But then again, there's the hassle of having a car in a city. Uh, you know, you don't just leave it anywhere. you got to pay to put it in places, right? Uh, and cost of uh, parking the car, if you brought the car, cost of parking it. So when we look at all of these, we might say, well, hang on a second there. Um, the depreciation on the car, listen, that car is going to depreciate anyways, whether you drive it or not. That's not really relevant to the cost of driving to Moncton now, is it? It's going to be the same no matter what. Gasoline, yeah, that's relevant because that's, that's a direct variable cost. 
the cost of auto insurance and license, you're going to pay that anyways. Notice that we, we, we can see that this is, this is going to be incurred in the future. Of course it is. But it's the same under each alternative. It's an unavoidable cost. So we can ignore that. Maintenance and repairs uh, per kilometer. Well, we would say that there's probably a direct correlation between driving your car and maintaining and repairing it. If I buy a car and leave it in the garage, hey, 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 I never have to repair it. Kind of a stupid thing to do, but I never have to repair it. So, yeah, that's probably relevant. Your parking fees at the university, that's, well, that doesn't, that's irrelevant uh, as well. Uh, your tires, well, I'd probably say, yeah, you know what? If you don't drive, uh, you don't have to replace your tires. The more you drive, the faster you replace your tires. I'd probably say, yeah, you could probably include that. So the real cost, the, or the relevant cost for making the decision is somewhat less than this 50 cents. When we look at the cost of a, a, a round-trip ticket uh, on rail, well, that's relevant. When we look at uh, the cost of putting your cat in a kennel while you're gone, well, you got to do that under either alternative, so that's irrelevant as well. So this, I'm not going to go through the whole example, but as you, uh, as you can read in the book uh, uh, on each of these items, uh, as you read, it probably comes as no surprise to you as you look at each one going, well, okay, I could have figured that out all on my own. I could have figured out what was relevant or not. Let's say that you're deciding between uh, two jobs in the city that you live in. Would you consider the rent on your apartment to, to be uh, uh, relevant in the decision? Well, not really, because whether you take the job at firm A or firm B, you're going to rent your apartment anyways. It's the same under both scenarios. However, if you had to move to one end of town for firm A's job and you had to move to the other end of town for firm B, then the differential on the rent would definitely be uh, uh, something you would think of. So if it's $800 in one place and $1,000 in the other, the relevant cost is, is the difference in the rent, the differential cost. One option is $200 higher. Under both scenarios, you're paying $800. Under one of the scenarios, you're paying an extra two. Do you get that? Okay, let's, uh, let's just uh, go on to uh, some more uh, scenarios, and we'll see that there's a long way to do this and a short way to do this. Well, here's a, a good uh, example that we're looking at here. Um, we're currently making a particular product, selling 5,000 units of it at $40. We can see all of our costs per unit broken down, and we have some fixed costs. But if we buy this new machine, this uh, on the bottom you can see fixed cost new machine $3,000, um, our costs change slightly. So just by looking at this, let's see if we can figure this out. Uh, we're still going to make 5,000 units under each uh, condition. They're still going to sell for 40 bucks. So sales are irrelevant at this point because they'll be the same. Our direct material costs per unit are going to be 14 no matter what we do, so we can ignore that. Our direct labor cost per unit, ah, it's suddenly different. It's $8 under one, it's $5 on the other. So it's $3 cheaper per unit times 5,000 units. So right away, we're $15,000 ahead by getting the machine. Let's see what else. Variable cost per unit are $2 under each situation. We can ignore that. Fixed costs are $62,000 under each situation. We can ignore that. And it costs us $3,000 to get. So we can see that we're $15,000 ahead if we spend $3,000. So yeah, we're done, right? The other way that we can do it would be to write out a new contribution format income statement under each of the alternatives. Well, as we write them out, we can see what we probably already knew. Look, sales are the same under both situations. Direct materials are the same. There's our direct labor, which we see a differential of 15,000. We already knew that. This last column is our differential cost. And benefits, we see zero, zero, 15,000. There's zero for variable overhead. We also have zero here for fixed expenses. They're the same. We have a differential cost of the new machine of 3,000 for a difference of 12,000. So we can do it this way. Um, you really wouldn't want to do it that way. Number one, it's a lot of extra work. It's a lot of extra work and you may not be able to generate all of the necessary costs to do something like this. You may be looking at one decision that's embedded in a lot of other things going on and to extract from the situation all the relevant costs for each contribution format income statement might not be possible. 
so you want to just take the differential cost between the two alternatives. Those are the only ones that are relevant. The other reason why you wouldn't want to do this is you run the risk. Once you start including extra numbers, you run the risk of actually thinking that those numbers are there to have decisions made about. Uh, and and uh, uh, you may make the wrong decision by including costs that really shouldn't even be uh, included. So here's a, a sort of just a, the end solution to it. Here's just a quick way to get it. the net advantage of renting the new machine. Uh, decrease in direct labor, 15,000. Increase in the rental cost, 3,000. Net benefit, 12. That's nice and easy. And I think while you were looking at that first chart that we looked at, uh, that had the per unit costs. I think you saw almost right away that, well, the only thing that's different is labor. It's three bucks cheaper per unit. There's 5,000 units. I can do the math. That's really about it. It's application. Now, what's important in this chapter is not so much arriving at the answer. That's not, that's not the, the emphasis of this chapter. The emphasis of this chapter is identifying the relevant costs for the situation that you're in. So the only really way... Uh, the only really good way to get you through a chapter like this is to say, well, let's take about four or five different scenarios and let's see if we can identify what kind of relevant cost would happen under different scenarios because that's really what it's about. If you can identify the relevant costs, the solution presents itself. Mm -hmm.